Yep. Hey y'all, it's Timmy with Collar Valley Cooks. Tonight, we're making old fashioned fried salmon patties. Something quick, easy, simple, cheap, economical, and delicious. So let's get started. I opened my can of salmon. And right quick, I'm gonna show y'all real quick. Most of the time when mama made fried salmon, she also made uh, beans and creamed potatoes. So tonight, I am just opening up some canned beans because I have got company and I'm just doing something easy. These, not company like trying to impress company, I'm taking care of my sister. These are just mixed beans, my favorite canned beans, if you wanted to know, that are dried, whether they're butter beans, pintos, whatever, or Lux. That's the brand Mama always used. It has a really nice thick broth. Take a look at that. And this one is their mixed bean. It is a northern and a pinto. Yes, I do use canned beans in a pinch. Nothing wrong with it. So we're getting none of these on the oven. I just thought I'd let y'all see the brand I like. And I'm gonna start them. And we've already got our potatoes over here starting up. So the first thing I do, Mama always did it, is um, separate my salmon. Um, but first, let's cut up a couple of green onions because I like to put two green onions in my salmon, okay? I'm gonna show you guys our cookbook because this recipe is in our volume one cookbook. Why? Because it was a meal we ate all the time. Volume one is full of those kinds of recipes. It has a hundred recipes, but it's the most common recipes that we ate uh, on a regular basis. Volume two has 200 recipes. They're really great recipes um, as well, things that we do eat on a regular basis. But this is just like your typical country cookbook 100 recipes. So, I guess y'all could see that. That's our volume one cookbook. So we're gonna take two green onion and uh, these look really pretty. They don't have a bad outer layer on them. This one, I guess I could take off the outside of right quick hope you're having a wonderful wednesday wonderful wednesday ww and i hope that you guys tune in and watch the finale tomorrow of family food fight this video will probably run for a long time so um, but if you're watching this the night that it airs tomorrow night we will be on the grand finale of family food fight Okay, so I always split my onions down the middle, and then I just chop them. Let me try to get in the nut angle so y'all can see what I'm doing. Nothing like a chef knife, my favorite knife of all. If you don't have a good knife, I would recommend you going on my website you can order this Cutco Chef Knife through there, or you can order another really good brand that's not as expensive. Uh, but it's really, really nice to have a good chef knife. You could never go wrong by adding it to your kitchen collection. And always try to support us and use our links off of our website, and that helps us put our kids through college over the next probably five or six years. So we're hoping that you guys and it also helps us buy groceries and make videos and get equipment. It's wonderful. These are just what we call green onions. Some people call them scallions. But you're going to chop them up two whole ones to go in your salmon patties. They're going to be delish, delish, delish. Now you can chop them. I cut them really thin. But you can go back and chop them even a little bit more if you want to. But boy, is that going to add the flavor to our salmon. Okay? It's going to be good, good, good. All right, one other thing, let me tell y'all, if you have a cookbook, any of either volume one or volume two, um, I want you to know that no matter what I'm calling out, if I call for, where did you say that? That's cornmeal. Everything, every time I say cornmeal in my cookbooks, my mama used white lily buttermilk cornmeal mix. That's what I mean. So it's not just plain old, old fashioned ground up cornmeal. It's actually cornmeal mix, but it's in a five pound bag. 
So it's not like G fee full of sugar cornmeal mix. It's like, you know, white lily cornmeal mix. Just giving y'all as a tip, you got the cookbooks so that you will know that because I don't want you to um, use um, straight cornmeal. Straight cornmeal. Old fashioned plain old cornmeal. My granny actually had that ground every year. She had, we grew field corn and corn, and granny actually took the corn to the mill every year uh, up until she died. She lived to be 90, uh, and she actually had her cornmeal um, ground. So granny actually used old-fashioned cornmeal and added flour to it. So, all right, we're going to put this to the side for a second, and I'm going to start picking out this salmon. What I do is I dump it out, and I guess I could do this at a low, just so y'all can watch. I'll put it in here, because I know y'all can't see good in the bowls from that direction. And so Mama would always take her salmon, she would take it out of the, out of the can, and she would take the bones out of the middle. A lot of y'all eat the bones. Y'all go right ahead. Mama never did, so I don't do it. I asked Chris tonight, I said, Honey, do you want to eat the bones since so many people eat the bones? He said no. <laughs> so we're not eating the bones tonight. It's so good to have all y'all on here on Color Valley Cooks. I hope that y'all stay on, um, watch and subscribe to our channel. I am just a southern girl from Polk County, Georgia, making just plain old food like Mama did. That's my motto, cook like Mama did. So, Mama took her skin off her salmon. So do I. Do I do everything Mama did to a tea? Not, not if I think something tastes better, okay? I do do some options on things that Mama didn't do because uh, sometimes things can be improved, of course. If you're a good cook, you know anything can be improved. And you don't frown on trying to improve something. All right. So, we're going to take this salmon now that I've got the skin off of it. And I'm going to crack an egg and put it in this dish. And then we're going to take just the meat part of the salmon and put it in here with our onion. Yummy. Okay. And I'm going to go rinse my hands off, y'all, and I'll be right back. Chris, you want to tell them a, a family story about salmon patties, or do you have one about your granny nickels or anybody? I don't know how she made her salmon patties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. You just ate them, did you? Yeah, I just ate them. They were good. Now, uh, Mama actually didn't put scallions or what we call green onion in her salmon patties. She just mixed them up plain. But I have added that because I think it's delicious. So that's what I do. Okay, the recipe book says... The can of salmon, it's a 14.7 ounce can of salmon. You got two green onions minced. You're gonna put in a raw egg. You're gonna put in a half a teaspoon of salt. Wait, Daddy, I'm not done. And you're going to put in a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then you're gonna put in a half a cup of flour and an eighth cup of cornmeal. Now, you can put in some cayenne pepper as an option if you want to, okay? So, we're going to use a quarter cup here, and I'm going to put in a half cup of flour. So, majority of the things going in mine is flour. I'm a flour girl. I love self-rising flour. and nothing like it. Now, you're going to use an eighth cup of cornmeal. If you go online and buy through our kitchen links, you can get these nice little scoops. So many people have bought them through there. You just go to www.collarvalleycooks.com, click on kitchen. And I think they're under my must-haves or they may be under utensils. But either way, this is an 8 cup scoop. Um, and they're just so handy dandy. So we're going to put in an 8 cup of cornmeal. And so the only other options, cayenne pepper, you want some in here, Chris? Why not? So what does my uh, recipe say about cayenne pepper? Uh, it says option half a uh, teaspoon of cayenne pepper. A half a teaspoon. Well, I'm going to compromise with you and do a quarter. How's that? Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't like anything real hot. 
spicy heat heat. I like spices and flavor. I just don't like for it to be too hot and burn me up. Okay, so now we're just going to mash everything up together. And I'm going to use a fork. Okay, that's one reason you want the egg in there. See, there's your egg. And um, if, if it's not wet enough with just the egg, you can always pour just a little bit of your salmon juice in there. But you want it to be thick and kind of dry so that you can fry it up in the skillet. Now, while we're mixing this, I'm going to go ahead real quick. Let me show y'all something real quick. We're going to use an iron. I'm going to turn it on and get it preheated while we're mixing this. And that way, everything will be just right. Okay. So I'm going to put this up on a medium high heat because that's a really big eye. We're going to add about a quarter. Um quarter i guess about a quarter inch deep of oil you may want to go a little bit more than that and we're going to let that preheat while we finish mixing this up i'm going to zoom in for y'all while i mix it so y'all can see it good see all them nice green onions in there and they look really good so just try not to add a lot of moisture to it. I mean, it's not going to hurt if you add a little bit. I'm going to add just a teeny bit from my pan. But you don't want to get it soggy. Too soggy, okay? Just enough that the flour sticks in it good. Almost like you're making a biscuit. It's kind of how you do when you make a biscuit. You put just enough buttermilk in there. Until all of your flour no longer is on the bottom of your dish. Just like you would if you were making a biscuit. Am I still centered? Pretty much. All right. Aren't those beautiful already? Gorgeous. Gorgeous, y'all. Gorgeous. Um, so we're going to hop on over here. Now, anytime you fry anything, I'm going to try to get y'all up a little bit higher so y'all can see down in there good anytime you fry anything no matter what you're frying you want to do a test piece okay so while your skillet is preheating my beans aren't getting warm I'm gonna turn them up while your skillet is preheating you're gonna take a little bit of your batter just a tiny bit put it in your skillet as a guide, okay? No matter what you're making, whether it's fried okra or fried squash or fried shrimp, whatever you're frying, make sure that you use a test piece because if you place breaded food into cold oil, it gets greasy, okay? So, uh, somebody just said they cook salmon in their air fryer. That's a great, great idea. But, you know, we're going the old-fashioned route tonight, doing it the good way. I mean, not saying that the air fryer is not good, because we actually love, love, love our air fryer. Okay, I'm going to move y'all so that you can not be right up in my way while I'm frying this. Here. Y'all just going to have to give the camera woman a second to fix the camera, okay? pretty high all right so it's hot getting good and hot so what I do is I change out my fork to a spoon and I usually use a tablespoon just out of the drawer and I just put it in a tablespoon at a time Now, you're going to want to fry these at about a, a medium-high temperature. You don't want them to get too brown before they cook through because you've got flour all through the middle of them. One thing that lots of times you go get is a fried um, crab cake, and it just grosses me out if it's not done in the middle. And lots of times people will take something like this, and they brown it, and they don't leave it in the oil long enough for it to get done on the inside and anything that's got flour in it like a crab cake or like these salmon patties you're going to want to let them sit in there long enough 
that the inside gets done too. Okay? I'm going to flip this little tiny piece. We're going to let this fry a minute. And it won't take them long, y'all. Don't those look pretty with those onions laying on the top of them? And boy, are they going to be delicious. Tonight, I'm just coming to you live showing you fried salmon patties with good old double Q salmon. Pink salmon out of a can. What you can afford to feed your family. You can pick up a can of this. And I want y'all to look how many it's going to make. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the skillet. And I've got enough over here for at least three or four more. So a can of salmon goes a long way to feed a family. So you can sometimes just open up just a simple can of beans. Yes, I do that. I am not a chef. I'm a home cook just like everybody else. So you can open you up a can of beans and feed your family some creamed potatoes. Now, I do make real creamed potatoes. I've never used instant potatoes for nothing. Um, and cream you up some good potatoes because they're cheap enough. And have a nice meal for your family, frying up some good fried salmon patties. All right, let's flip these suckers. After they've been in there a couple of minutes, I'm going to use something flat to flip them over. I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to use my fish, my fish spatula. It's nice and flat. I'm using cast iron. So they always want to stick just a little bit to the cast iron. So you always want to use something uh, that'll kind of go underneath the patty. I'm just loosening them up to start with. Then we'll flip them. Okay? Because they, they can still get a little bit more brown. Just, and it won't bother me a bit. So loosen them up good. And she's using just vegetable oil uh, It's the kind of oil she's using. Yeah. Plain old vegetable oil. Get the off brand. You ain't got to get nothing fancy. All right? Feed your family. I just buy whatever's on sale. My granny used Mazola corn oil because that's what the doctor told her to use for her cholesterol. For most of my life, she lived to be 90 and Great Daddy lived to be 93. And they ate shortening every single day, shortening biscuits. And she fried stuff in shortening, and she used Wesson corn oil. That's what she used. My Granny B from Collard Valley. Collard Valley is a place in Polk County. A beautiful place. It's God's country. And a lot of y'all are saying, you know, that you use crackers and different things like that. And that's the good thing about salmon is it's real versatile. You can do all, you can cook this all kind of ways. Yes. As long as it, as long as you don't have too much flour or it's too wet, uh, you know, you can, you can do a lot of things with it. One thing I'm going to say though, you know how I am about my self-rising flour, how in love with my self-rising flour I am. If you've made this recipe with self-rising flour flour and you like it, please tell everybody because my kids always thought this was chicken when they were young. They couldn't tell the difference because it's not real fishy tasting because I do use quite a bit of flour in it. Can you still taste the salmon? Absolutely. You know I don't like to mask the flavor of anything, but boy, it makes it go further for your family and it makes the kids so excited um, to try it. Charlie says he's going to try this with red fish. Oh, his thing. And went speckled away. trout. And speckled trout. I live in South Louisiana next to the bayous, and this is a great video. You're very welcome, Charlie. You are so correct. This would be good. I mean, instead of a crab cake and a salmon patty, make a, a fish cake, right? Me and Chris loved fish. We stay down at, um, you could turn those beans down for me, baby. We stay down at the beach quite a bit at Pensacola, and we fish the flats, Charlie. So the most of the time we, we do catch redfish and speckled trout. If you'll go on Nichols Retirement Empire, you'll see us fishing a lot. That is our personal channel that Chris does. And we do love, love, love to fish. We fished on our honeymoon, actually. So we're going to take these out. They're beautiful. They're nice and golden brown on both sides. They're just gorgeous. Look, both sides are just gorgeous. So we're going to take these out and finish frying the rest of them up. Now, tonight, 
um, if you do fry these and if and um, you you're not quite finished with the rest of your meal or your vegetables or whatever um, I, we have an air fryer I was gonna actually lay these in my air fryer tonight until I got my cream potatoes and stuff done um, my oil I'm gonna have to put just a little more oil in there because the flour does absorb it a little but um, I was gonna tell y'all I was gonna actually put these in the air fryer to keep them kind of warm um, and just heat them up real quick before we eat because I just wanted you guys to see us make these and it'd be a short enough video that y'all would enjoy it so let me put my little test piece in there because we added more oil and we don't want to it's still pretty hot we don't want to make them all soggy and greasy So if you're coming in late, these have two diced green onions. They have salt, pepper, cornmeal, and flour, and just a touch of cayenne pepper. And an egg. And because my mama didn't eat the bones, I don't eat the bones. But sure, you can eat the bones in the skin, and it's probably good for you. I just don't seem to have it in me to do it. I'm so funny, when we cook our fish, when we fish out on the bay and we clean our fish I fillet the fish right off the skin and everything no matter what we catch I do not like to have the skin on there except mackerel well mackerel yeah but I still would rather have it without it but we don't eat the skin yeah so I'm going to show y'all these up close and show y'all how pretty they are okay I, I thought this thing was zoomed in, but it's actually, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm messing it up. Let me fix it. There it is. Um, there they are. So I'm going to open up one and let you see the inside of it, too, so y'all can see how pretty it is. One that we just took off, so you can see the onion when you open it up. It's still got plenty of fish. You know, it's still fishy tasting and everything. It's just really, really good. Talking about delicious with cream potatoes. You can't beat it. All right, so I'm going to flip these right quick. We're almost done. We're almost done. I hope y'all have enjoyed um, watching me make just plain old-fashioned salmon patties. They are a little different. Sorry, I just... They are a little different than Mama's because they got a little pe pepper in them, cayenne pepper, and they have the two green onions in them. I hope you buy a can the next time you're in the grocery store um, and you frost them up for your family. And I hope they, that you make some really good cream potatoes with no lumps that are just nice and fluffy. Just watch my video for that and eat them with them. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks where we cook like Mama did. Y'all watch the Nichols on Family Food Fight, even if it's beyond the day. Y'all go back and watch it on Hulu. Bye, love ya.